Hello and welcome to our first pre-calculus 11 lesson on quadratic functions. So first thing we're going to look at is what does it mean to solve y equals x squared? And as we discussed in the review, we need to find all values of x and y that will make our equation y equals x squared true. So for example, if we get 5 equals 5, that would be a true statement. 2 equals 7 would not be true. So let's have a look at our table of values down here. If x equals negative 2, then what do we have to put in for y to make that true? Well, the right side, negative 2, negative 2 is going to be 4. So if I could put in 4 for y, then I'd end up with 4 equals 4, which is a true statement. So when x equals negative 2 and y equals 4, then y equals x squared is true. If I put in negative 1 for x, I need to put in 1 for y to make it true. If I put in 0 for x, I'd need to put in 0 for y to make it true. If I put in 1 for x, I'd need 1 for y, and 2 for x, 4 for y. All right, so let's see where these go on our graph here. So negative 2, 4, it's going to be here. Negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. And let's just add a couple more points to see where this is going. If I have negative 3 and 9, that would also make it true. And 3 and 9, x equals 3, y equals 9, would also make that true. So that's going to give us negative 3, 9 and positive 3, 9. So what we end up with is, that's going to keep going up there forever. This is going to come down here in a nice curve along the bottom, not a sharp V. And there we go. That's what the solution to y equals x squared looks like if we place it on a graph. Um, notice that at the bottom here, if I were to put in, so in this rounded bottom part here, if I were to put in x equals 0.1, y equals 0 0.01, and x equals 0.5, y equals 0.25, that would give us that nice rounded shape at the bottom. Also notice that the bigger the x's get, my y's are going to get bigger and bigger as well. So if x equals 4, y is going to be 16, 5, 25, so it just keeps getting steeper and steeper. Okay, the shape of this graph is called a parabola. And parabolas are really common in nature and man-made objects. So um, if you throw a ball through the air, it will form the sh it will trace a parabola through the air. Um, if you have a satellite dish, that'll be in the shape of a parabola. So pretty useful stuff. Alrighty, let's throw a little curveball in here now. Notice we've got y equals 2x squared. And see what values of y and x are going to make that true. So again, let's look at our first one, when x equals negative 2. So on our right side, we'll have 2 times negative 2 squared. Bed mass says we're going to do negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. So if I put in y equals 8, that'll make the equation true. It's not a very good 8. There we go. If I put in negative 1, Negative 1 squared is 1 times 2. The right side will be 2, so I also want the left side to be 2. So if y equals 2, that'll make it true. 0 squared is 0 times 2 is 0. 2 and 8. All right. So we're going to have 0, 0, negative 1, 2, 1, 2, negative 2, 8, and 2, 8. And there's our parabola. Um, probably your first impression is going to be that it's skinnier. Um, it's actually better of us to think of it as a vertical stretch. So if you think if you've got a picture on the computer, like this, little face there, and I were to grab the arrow thinking like that and make it 
twice as tall, like that, notice that the width of the face is actually exactly the same, but it looks skinnier because it's twice as tall. That's what's happened to our graph. Okay, so compared to x squared, y equals x squared, y equals 2x squared is vertically, vertically expanded. It's been stretched by a factor of 2. So basically on our original, we went, so we started at 0, 0 on our original, and we went over 1, up 1. In this case, we go over 1, up 2. On our original, we went over 2, up 4. On this one, we went over 2, up 8. So everything's twice as far from the x-axis. All right, on the next page, now we've got y equals 1 half x squared. All right, and again, let's see what happens when we put in our first x value here. So I'm going to have 1 half, negative 3 squared on the right. Bed mass says go negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, so I'll have a half times 9. So if I put 4 and a half, or 4.5 in for y, then that will make my equation true. So I'll have negative 3 for x and 4.5 for y, and that'll make it true. Um, if x equals negative 2, y is going to equal 2. When x equals negative 1 and y equals 0 0.5, that'll make our equation true. 0, 0 0.5, 2, and 4.5. And I'd, you're probably noticing that the numbers are repeating themselves as we move away from zero. And we'll talk about that in a second. All right, so let's get these points on the graph. Zero, zero. And then we go one and negative one to point five. Negative two goes up to two. Two goes up to two. Negative three up to 4.5. And three up to 4.5. And this time, our parabola looks wider because we've squashed it. So same idea, right? If we had that face, and we took those arrows and we made it twice as tall, it's going to look wider. Even though it's the exact same width, it's going to look wider because it's been squashed vertically. OK, so compared to y equals x squared, y equals 1 half x squared is vertically compressed. It's been squashed vertically by a factor of 1 half. And same thing. On my original graph, I went over 1, up 1. On this one, I go over 1, up a half. Original graph was over, over 2, up 4. This time, we go over 2, up 2. So it goes half as far away from the x-axis. All right, now question 7 wants to know the domain and range of y equals 1 half x squared. So you remember that domain pertains to x. And we are going to have x's all the way both ways. Any value of x is going to be OK. So we can say that x is real, or we can write that in symbols like this. That says basically x is any number we want. And then range, our y's, Our y's are going to start here at 0 and go up forever. So my y's have to be greater than or equal to 0. Remember, we've got a point at 0, 0, so we need to include 0. So there's our domain and range. OK, number 8 asks us for the vertex. Vertex means corner. So the closest thing this has to a corner is right here at 0, 0. So I'm just going to write 8 up here just to keep things on the same page. And our vertex is at the origin, the point 0, 0. Okay, and question 9 now asks us about the axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry is a mirror line. And you should be able to see that there's a mirror line that goes right through the middle here. So everything on the left and right side of that mirror is going to be the same. 
And that's where, on our table of values, we were getting the numbers repeating no matter which way we were going from 0. All right, so the equation of that line is x equals 0. If you get messed up, just think about some points on that line. For example, here we have the point 0, negative 2. Farther down, we have the point 0, negative 5. Everywhere on that line, x equals 0. So the equation of the line, x equals 0. And now 10 just asks us, is our parabola opening up or down? And it is opening up like a cup. All right, question 11 asks us to describe in words what we think the graph of the solution to y equals negative 3x squared will look like. Well, from the 3, we can predict that it will be vertically expanded by a factor of 3. And my writing is awful. Okay, and there's something else here we haven't seen yet. There's a negative here. So let's do our table of values and see if we can figure out what's going on with that negative. So let's start with our normal x values here. So if x equals negative 3, then the right side will be negative 3 squared is negative, or sorry, will be 9 times negative 3 will be negative 27. So if I put in y equals negative 27, that is going to make our equation true. Yeah, that's going to be off the graph, so we won't even use that one. Okay, if I put in negative 2, squared will be 4 times negative 3, negative 12. That'll be negative 3, 0, negative 3, negative 12, negative 27. And these two guys we're just going to ignore because they're not even going to fit on the graph. And the other ones will have negative 2, negative 12, negative 1, negative 3, 0, So there's our long stretched out parabola. And it looks like the negative makes us open down. So if we have a negative in front of the x squared, our graph is going to open down. All right, so question 13, first domain and range. So our domain, we're going to be able to put in any x we want. And that'll mean x only needs to be a real number. Our range is going to be y equals 0 on down. So our range will be y is less than or equal to 0. Our vertex is still at 0, 0 for today. And our axis of symmetry is going to be right down the center. There's our axis of symmetry. And that's the line x equals 0. And now 14 asks us, is it opening up or down? And it is opening down. Easy way to remember which way the parabola is going to open. If I have y equals a positive number, so say 2x squared, it's positive, it's happy, it's smiling. If y equals negative a quarter x squared, I've got a negative number, so it's negative, it's unhappy, our graph will be frowning. And last question, 15. So we're looking for the equation of a parabola with vertex 0, 0, passing through the point negative 2, 1. So let's just quick draw that first. So our vertex, our corner, is going to be 0, 0, and it's passing through the point negative 2, 1. So there's the point there. Oops, that's not negative 2, 1, that's negative 2, negative 1 negative 2, 1 is going to be there. So that's what our parabola is going to look like. All of our parabolas today have been y equals some number 
times x squared. And they've all had the vertex 0, 0. So let's start with that, this idea that y equals ax squared. And then we just need to put in y equals 1 and x equals negative 2 from the point we've been given. And we end up with 1 equals 4a over 4, a equals a quarter. So the equation of this parabola we've drawn on the left will be y equals 1 quarter x squared.